Well, well, well guys, welcome back to a brand new league racing video. We are back with AOR this time at the US Grand Prix. And really quickly guys, I want to mention the last episode at Japan. If you haven't seen it, it'll be linked up in the top right hand corner of your screen. It did so, so well and I want to give you guys a massive shout out and a massive thank you for all the support on that previous episode. And today we are here at the next race and it's the US Grand Prix round number 18 I believe of the season. And we've got our work cut out for ourselves because, you know, this is a tough track for me. It's not one of my favourites. I'm not the fastest or the most confident around here and I don't particularly love Kota that much. So it's not ideal but there is some breaking news and the fact is... This weekend, my main championship rival, Paris Burrell, is not here this weekend. He did not turn up for the race. So we have got a massive opportunity and a massive open goal for a tap-in to try and increase our championship lead with only four, or in this case, three races to go after this one. Um, you know, we, we've got a big opportunity here to really extend our lead, which, you know, currently stands, I believe, at 13 points, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to try and push that forward here today and fingers crossed we can achieve that so as you can see i've been doing some laps in the meantime it's a wet qualifying i do set a new benchmark as we have the final two minutes of the session to go and the pace is pretty decent you know the race is going to be in the wet as well so we're going to have to prepare for that but generally speaking we're currently top of the time sheets and this lap here was actually even quicker i was a tenth and a half up absolutely flying but then through the s's unfortunately i just get a bit of a corner cut there and get a warning and unfortunately invalidate my lap so it's all we're going to go down to the last lap so i took a bit of a cool down currently norbert Jakob p1 my teammate florian napik is in p2 and Gianna Fader is the one to watch out for. He is super quick. And Dylan Warren in P5 as well in the Red Bull. Up towards turn one though, we're going to try and break at the black box on the right hand side. Holding it in third gear and trying to get that momentum and that rotation by short shifting on the exit. Trying to keep the car almost flat through turn two as we now head into three, four, five and six. All the S section basically trying to carry that momentum all the way through here as the checkered flag falls and as we end the first sector we are a tenth and a half up so it's been a very strong start to the lap currently p4 as kalachu moves up to third place now bit of a mistake there missing my apex on the right hand i didn't quite get the car you know all over the curb which in turn compromised my exit and i pretty much lost all the advantage that i made up in that in that sequence now down towards the hairpin i do run it a bit deep but i get a very nice cut back exit and uh, get some good traction so we're still a tenth and a half up and generally speaking we haven't really gained or lost anything in the last five or six corners we're now p6 so this lap has to be good because people are improving around us hard on the anchors just before the 50 meter board trying to cut that inside curb a lot because you can get away with a lot through there without getting a warning but my exit wasn't particularly great and i kind of threw away nearly two tenths but luckily we find a bit of time through these double rights as I get a really nice bit of traction. Now into the double lefts again, taking a nice wide line to really focus on my exit. Slow in, fast out, definitely the way to go. Keeping the car relatively tight through the triple rights here. And I didn't quite nail it, lost a little bit of time compared to before. But then the penultimate corner, I hit that perfectly. And we do gain a lot of lap time. Then into the final corner, trying to make sure we don't throw it all away. Short shifting on the exit to make sure we get that traction across the line. And we shoot up to P1 in what is an extremely close qualifying. But shortly after, Jan Fader would take that away. At the end of qualifying though, as you can see, looking at the final results, it's going to be Jan Fader with a 42.7 on pole and to be fair in hindsight you know watching it back at the time i didn't think it was possible but i could have probably got that lap you know there was a lot of moments in that where i threw away a tenth you know or two tenths in certain areas like at the end of the s's at the top of the hill and also at the end of the back straight into the heavy break zone so definitely a bit of time was left on the table but nonetheless failure deserves it he nailed the lap under pressure and he got pulled by two tenths so a very convincing lap from him we get second place ahead of dylan warren in p3 Brownie gets fourth place ahead of Pablo Futez or aka Norbert Jakob. Then it's my teammate Florian Napik in sixth place on the third row. So we've got two cars in the top six. And, you know, in our constructors battle versus Red Bull, only Warren is racing today. So we've got a big chance as well to hopefully secure some big points in that championship. We've then got Kalachu P7 ahead of Michael Tanitza. Then it's Bogin and Scrippy running out the top 10 with Kryzix, Hittinen, Duza, Christian Sendel, Zoran, Daigoro and S1 Cent missing out on the top 10. So there we go. That is your lot for qualifying. We're now going to move into the race. Okay, here we go. It's time to get ready 
for this. It's full wet conditions, extreme wet tyres on the car as we line up in our respective grid slots. And we're going to see how this goes. It's going to be a bit of an adaptation process. There was a couple of restarts, so I kind of went a bit cold. But here we go. The five red lights are on and away we go for the US Grand Prix. Failure gets a nice clean start. To be fair, Warren gets a good start as well. I've got to make a decision here and I'm going to try and go to the outside of turn one as we go three wide into the first corner. Failure gives me a nice little squeeze though, which is fair enough as you're holding the lead and uh, Warren trying to get the cut back on us, but we're going to hold it three wide currently, but we're just about going to get the edge heading into the S's and crucially hold on to the second place that we started in. So at the moment, it's all about an adaptation process and also me personally, because I'm running on pretty high graphics, the, the reflection and the shine and the water makes it very hard for me when I'm following a car okay. to see the white lines and the curbs until the very last second. Bit of a shame right here as we get a safety car because I got a really good run out of the left-hander. Failure got a bit wobbly and I think I could have probably challenged him into the hairpin or possibly in the back straight. But unfortunately, the safety car comes out and uh, that's going to buy Failure a bit of time there, which is a bit unfortunate because I really thought... I had a really good chance to get by. Either way, we cut on towards the end of lap one, and here is where the race got a bit interesting. So a few cars are going for the intermediates, including my teammate Florian Napik, and he's going to kind of relay to me and give me information regarding the track conditions, basically. So I've got, you know, a bit more to risk, so I'm going to play it safe. You know, my title rival Paris isn't here, so I'm currently P2. We're chilling. I'll be fine. So we're going to focus on the restart. But here, there was big controversy. So you can see right now, I look behind for a split second and I almost run into the back of Failure. I didn't touch him, but Failure gets a five-second penalty for, I'm guessing, causing a collision. Even though there was no contact, that was a lag, you know, tap in a way. I had no damage on our front wing and I just about avoided it. If you watch the video back in slow-mo, you'll see I didn't actually touch him. Um, really unfortunate, the timing of it, because I looked behind for a split second. And when I went back to the normal camera view, uh, Failure was right in front of me. So... Yeah, really, really unfortunate because now Failure will have to take a five-second stop go in his next pit stop, and he will have to stop for intermediates at some point. So I felt really bad at this point. You know, it's not the way you want to benefit, you know, or gain a position, basically. So I wanted to correct that in a way. So my target was to get ahead of Failure on track and try and at least make it a bit more, you know, legitimate in a way. So here we go, back up to racing speed, lap number four here. We've got myself... Just ahead of um, Warren, who I believe got taken out in turn one there. He got T-boned or something, and that allowed a, lot, a bunch of people to overtake, basically. And Warren has dropped outside the top ten, I think. So that is massive for the constructors as he gets taken out of the race. And it's me and Failure out front just doing our thing as he sets the pace here, to be fair. I was a bit slow to react. You know, the, the pace on the safety car restart wasn't great for me. But then I started to get in a rhythm here. You can see now lap five, purple first sector. And we are right on the back of failure here. But just like before, just as I'm trying to line up a move, unfortunately, there's a VSC which kind of gets failure out of trouble for now. We now cut on to the VSC restart. And we're going to nail it, to be fair. Pretty decent restart. Norbert Jakob right behind us. Uh, Kryzik's in P4 picked up a drive-through. So that's worth noting. So he sped on the VSC. And at the minute, it's pretty much a three-way fight. And uh, me versus Norbert Jakob and Fehler. With Fehler taking that five-second penalty, it's looking pretty good for us right now. We cut into lap seven. Kryzik's had to serve his drive-through. And now Fehler was starting to struggle on his tyres, I believe. And uh, we was all over the back of him. We was, again, similar to the safety car restart. It took us a while, but when we got up to speed, the pace was there. And here you go. You can see Fehler sliding through the final corner. We're going to get right onto his gearbox. We're going to put the pressure on here and make a move. He doesn't defend. I think he knows because of the time penalty, there's no point. Uh, we're going to take the inside line into the first corner. He tries to match me on the brakes. I do run it a bit wide, but I manage to keep the car within track limits and also not squeeze him off. And we're going to go around the outside of turn two as we just about keep the throttle at a relatively high speed so that I can make around the outside. And we're now into the race lead. So a very important move there and exactly what we needed, especially because of that time penalty. I wanted to make sure we got the pass done on track. So... Yeah, at the minute, we're looking pretty good. But now, the track is starting to dry out a little bit. Lap 8. And my teammate Florian was telling me that the track was improving. You can see now, we've been given a strategy change, which is usually the telltale sign that it is time. So, to be fair, in hindsight, the timing of the overtake on failure was absolutely perfect. Because we're now going to box from the lead this lap. 
and we've got one of the last pit boxes so we're not going to get held and we're going to strap on a set of intermediate tires and this is where Fader's is going to take his five second penalty unfortunately so he is going to take a bit of pain in this pit stop but here we go into the pit box standard 2.6 and we're going to get back on the way on the inters and crucially ahead of everybody else now Florian Napik, my teammate, and a bunch of others as well who have caused pit for Inters under that very first safety car. We're going to take track position, but crucially, we have nine lap fresher tyres. So we're going to have a massive advantage long term here. We've got Kalachu right behind us. He pit, I believe, one lap ago. He went for an undercut and he's made it work. He's 1.7 behind me and his Inters were nicely warmed up. And he managed to get within a second of me on the next lap, but also picked up a time penalty. But he is setting the pace. Fast as that for Kalatu as we move up to P4, as Michael Tanidza is in the pit lane. And this was a phase where I was pretty much just dragging Kalatu along with me. I was trying to set some pace, set some good lap times on these fresh inters. And uh, he was sticking with me, which is fair enough. You can see that we set a fast as lap. He takes it away from me. And uh, that was kind of the story, really. And also worth noting, Fehler was really, really fast on these tyres. He was a couple of tenths to half a second quicker sure. every single lap and yeah, it's a shame yeah. about that penalty because I think Fraylor genuinely had race winning pace he was probably even faster than me in fairness uh, but lap 11 we've caught up to Dylan Warren now and he's stayed out all of this time on the full wets I believe he's trying to go for the one stop so uh, wets onto inters so he's taking a bit of pain on the full wet I'm tire sure to hopefully get those inters when he eventually pits to the end of the race and you can see I'm all over the back of him he's really struggling for grip here we're going to try it around the outside doesn't quite work I'm going to then going to get a bit of a cut back here and I thought you know what going to send it down the inside at the final corner just a big old lunge on the brakes Dylan Warren tries to get the cut back but of course there's no traction or grip on those tyres and also worth noting he's going to hold up Kalachu here so this is my chance to shake off and break away from the Renault driver as Fehler sets yet another fastest lap and this is going to be my opportunity here to kind of drop the Renault and pull away because uh, there's going to be a bit of an opening and we cut to lap 13 um, a few things happen and basically we got a three second plus gap to Norbert Jakob and Kalachu I believe uh, the Renault got caught up with Warren I believe or something I'm not quite sure either way we went into a bit of a, a rhythm Asana set a couple of personal bests. The pace was strong. Fraylor still pumping in those fastest laps. But crucially, I was finding my feet. The car felt good. I was starting to get that consistency going. And I was starting to really catch the cars ahead. Duza and also my teammate Florian Napik. Now, strategy-wise, it was going to get interesting. Because we heard on the radio, it was going to start drying out. So, Florian realized this. And he's going to go for one more intermediate stint. Yeah before probably going for the dry tyres. We realised between the two of us he wasn't going to make it on that one set of inters to the dry period. So he's going to try and pick for a fresh set and go for it and go full send. Meanwhile, in the meantime, Nubit Jakob got a three second time penalty. Kalachu is now up to six seconds and now Duza is going to pit. So we are going to take the lead here in this race on lap 16 onto the start of lap 17. So we're chilling, we're doing pretty well. Failures in P5 without a penalty, so he's trying to recover here. You can see eventually uh, more cars pit and Failure moves up to P3. And we're trying to set the pace. So again, another personal best, lap 19. And I'm trying to hang on now for the dry tyres. That's my strategy. So I'm trying to make the tyres last as we get our first warning for track limits. I'm trying to be very smooth on the throttle. I've got, you know, five seconds in my pocket. I've got no pressure from behind. So I'm just trying to make sure I keep a cool head. You can see my tyre wear starting to kick in now on lap 20 and I was starting to run the numbers and run the math you know can I make it to the end of the race on inters or will I have to stop for dryers now lap 23 the rain has officially stopped so we're getting to that phase now the track is still damp you can see my tire wear has gone up quite a lot 62 percent if I can make that out on my little preview window and um, it was quite tough because this track is very rear tire heavy there's a lot of traction zones and when the track's drying it really adds tire wear on the intermediates lap 25 you can see the track is getting even drier and we are going to pit unfortunately it's just a bit too far to go we're gonna go for the dry tires you know it's the best time to pit 76 percent left rear i would have had a puncture on the next lap had i gone for one more so we're gonna box play it safe we're gonna strap on a set of soft compound tires because as you can see drs now gets enabled and we're gonna go to the end and see it out on these and uh, luckily no undercuts no one got the strategy more perfect than me as i was the first car to pit for the dryers and there we go happy days drs once again re-enabled and we rejoin in the race lead and all we've got to do now is cruise to the finish on these tires i did have a bit of an attempt to try and go for the fastest lap but unfortunately the nature of me being the first guy on track 
means I've got the worst conditions. So whoever is last to cross the line in this race will have the best track conditions for a fastest lap. And you can see here, last lap of the race, two purple sectors. It was a purple lap at the time as we come through to win in USA once again. But it's not going to be the ultimate fastest lap as that, I believe, would go to Bogin, who is 15 seconds behind me. So, yeah, overall, a race win. It wasn't 26 points, but still, happy days. Paris didn't arrive, my main title rival, and we take full advantage by picking up the win. And it just goes to show, sometimes it goes your way, sometimes it doesn't. You know, the fact Paris didn't turn up and failure got that very unfortunate five second penalty which kind of took him out of contention for the race win um man it was my day you know and sometimes it goes through sometimes it doesn't and that's kind of what happens in league racing you know uh, at, the, at the end of the race that we finished 7.6 clear of failure uh, Norbert Jakob got third place ahead of Bogin Warren gets p5 on a recovery after that being taken out of turn one Duza p6 ahead of Kalachu Scrippy Florian Napik scores a couple of points and Christian Sendel p10 and missing out on those we do have Hittinen, Zoran, uh, Brownie, Michael Tanitza, Kryzik, Daigoro and, F and S1 Zent and in the end I believe it was Brownie who actually got the fastest lap so as you can see he finished p13 so you benefit from being uh, further behind we then look at the driver standings and we extend our lead to a whopping 68 points with three races to go the next race is at mexico guys and it's going to be match point championship point all we've got to do in mexico is score 10 points and we become world drivers champion in aor pc top split so that's the plan we've got basically finishing p5 in the next race it doesn't matter what paris does if we get that p5 i am a champion in aor and i believe i'm a champion for the first time ever in my league racing career so what a way to do it in top split of the Apex Online Racing League. Elsewhere, Failure overtakes Brownie for P3. My teammate Florian is in P11. And uh, we then move into the Constructor standings. And we extend our lead to 17 points over Red Bull with that result here today. McLaren also overtake Mercedes for third place. And that is going to go down to the wire, I think. The Constructors will go down to the final race. I think it's going to be pretty close. And uh, we're going to have to keep working on that one to try and secure that championship but guys that is going to be it from me here today for this episode of the apex online racing league as uh, we pick up the win in usa and uh, i think that's two wins in a row because we won the last race in japan as well so we are on a bit of a roll mexico next time guys so stay tuned for that if you enjoyed this episode then slap a like on it subscribe for more and also shout out to the members of the channel for supporting as always finally check out the two videos on screen including the previous race at japan where i did the full race on a set of hard tires and hopefully guys tune in next time for another episode but until then take care and it's goodbye from me